hello, hello. This is Elsa coming from Beamish Crafty Corner. And I received this a very long time ago in a swap. I don't even remember who sent it to me. Um, but it was a dangle on something, probably a pocket letter. And it's just a pretty little piece. And I, as I looked at it, I noticed that the feather was glued in with what looks like it's probably E6000 into a cap that's actually designed for a Komohimo bracelet and it has a little loop at the top and then they wired in um, some beads and put a little lobster claw at the end and I thought you know that's so cute you could add stuff to it and you could add some more beads to it and you could just make this like a really full dangle and so I decided I wanted to give this a try now since most people don't have this kind of an end and, you know, wiring and crimping tools and all of that type of stuff, I thought, this is probably not a beginning project. So let's do this as a beginning project. So I went to the store and I bought a bag of feathers. Now I do have a huge uh, bag of plumes, ostrich plumes and peacock feathers and stuff, but I didn't want to damage any of those and I wanted to practice, so I got some junk feathers like three bucks at the Hobby Lobby, 40% off. And I picked one out, just a cutie, just a little one. And I have some of these. Now these are called crimps, but you do not require a crimping plier for them. This is a 13 millimeter flat crimp. And it looks like this, okay? And basically, it's got a loop at the top, two little flaps, and a tiny little tooth right here. So that when you push these in, whatever gets sandwiched in there gets pushed against the tooth and stays put. So I'm going to go ahead and get out all the tools that we need and I'll be right back. All right, easiest way to do this. Take your feather, place it into the crimp between the two arms. And then take a pair of needle nose pliers and hold that at the tip. You're going to hold that in your non-dominant hand. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to push in on the two crimp sides until we get them kind of closing in. And then you can press one down flat and we'll come around and get the other one, okay? So that's one, and it's nice and flat, and then I'm going to come over to the other side, and I'm going to press the other one in, and I'm going to press it flat, okay? Now that feather is good and stuck in there. It's not going to come out, all right? So the next part of this is to build some beading for this, and so for that I am going to get out some beads, and I will be right back and we'll get started. All right, so since our feather that we've selected to do this with is a beige color, I have decided that I am going to be using some beiges and browns. Uh, so I've selected about 25 beads or so. And because it's a feather, it's very lightweight. So I've selected some plastic pieces as well as some glass pieces and some acrylic pieces. And there's even some natural stone in here, okay? Uh, just for the purpose of kind of balancing it out. I'm going to be mixing these with just some clear AB crystals. Um, probably the biconals, but most likely the rounds. Um, I have a charm here that is the tree of life. I have a small piece of chain, some regular head pins that just have flat heads, some small lobster claws, and as always, my six millimeter and a pair of looping pliers and my needle nose. So this is everything that I need. So I'm gonna get started. And whenever you're building beads, remember symmetry is important here. So, right, so I'm gonna go ahead by starting with an AB round crystal here. And I'm gonna put on this brown clear and this plastic one that looks more substantial than it is, but it's actually a uh, plastic bead and it has a motif on it, a heart. So I'm going to make sure that I keep the heart facing up and then I'm going to put the other 
piece on here and one more of the round AB crystals. I don't want to lose those. They're slippery little boogers. Okay, so I've built the first angle and I'm just going to keep doing that, making sure that I have a symmetry in them that they are built so that I have what I have on one side, I have on the other. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get these going. And then once I have them, I'll be right back. All right. So we have all of our bead pieces and I have done all of my loops on them. So now we're going to attach one of our lobster claws to a jump ring. And we're going to attach that to our train, our chain on the second link, not the top link, the second link down. Okay. And then we're going to skip a link and we're going to put our first bead set on. Okay. just going to put the hook through the chain and then we're going to use our pliers and we're going to move the pin back. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and do that to all of our pieces, skipping a link in between. So let's get the next one up here. We want to make sure that we get it in the right link. And I've had a lot of people tell me, well, you know, when I do this, my dangle hangs funny. Let me tell you something. If you do this, you need to make sure that you hook all of your dangle pieces on the same side of your chain. That's the trick to making sure that they don't hang funny. Okay. We have that one on. We're going to skip a link. We're going to put the next one on. Make sure I got the right link here. There we go. It's this one. See, I was trying to go for the wrong link. I hate it when I put it in the wrong link. Hook that onto our chain and then just going to make sure that we've got it twisted back where it needs to be. And then the last one is actually going to go on the last link. So I'm going to make sure that I've got them all lined up the right way. And this last one is going to go right on the last link of the chain. this back. Let's 
just a little further. Stick it out just a smidge. Get this all lined up. Oops, it's still hanging up there. Let me tell you why this is so difficult. Because the beads roll around on the pin, so the pin turns. There's really no way to hold it. <laughs> okay, so now we have all of our beads on there. And the next thing to, put, to do is put on our charm. So we're just going to get another one of our rings. We're going to find the opening. We're just going to push the two pieces apart. And again, remember, when you're working with these rings, do not do this. Do this. Okay? I wish I could get my camera to focus to show it to you, but my camera doesn't want to focus for those things. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on that one last ring that I had up there, that loop, that extra loop I left. And then I'm going to push these back together. Make sure they're nice and even. And then I am going to bring in my feather and I'm going to get one more jump loop ring here. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to hook it onto the main jump ring here that I have on my class and through the hole at the top of the fitting, I put on the feather and then I'm going to close this up. there it is. Then we're going to bring in a feather. Now for this one, I'm using one of the plumes. Okay. So I have my beautiful ostrich plume and I want to attach this to this. So one more jump ring. Whenever you're attaching something, it's another jump ring. All right, jump ring through the top piece. Okay. And we're going to bring this up and we're going through the loop, through the jump ring that we put our connector on, our lobster claw. There it is. My beautiful feather dangle. Here's the first one. That's it, guys. Those are my little dangles. So until I see you again, if you haven't done so already, hit that red button for me and subscribe. Like me, ring my bell, and share me with all your friends because I'm playing with feathers. Yeah. And jewelry stuff. And, uh, yeah. Stuff. Bye-bye.